Hello there parents, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway. I've just bought a lovely new train set which won't scare your children half to death, honest. So I saw a post on Rails of Sheffield's website to say that they just received stock of a Backman train set which hasn't been around for a little while and I noticed that the price was really really cheap, uh, less than 60 quid, £59.50. So I decided to pick it up. It is this, the Circle Electric train set based on Underground Ernie. Now I should kick off by saying I, at the point of buying this train set, had never heard of Underground Ernie. It was a TV show uh, that took place way after my time, after my time of being a child. I'd never seen it, much less grown up with it. So you might be wondering, why the title? Well, the first little shock I received was when I was unpacking this when it was delivered, and I caught sight of what appeared to be a diseased caterpillar watching me from the inside of the box. So as you can imagine, I've been slightly frightened about opening this and unleashing whatever's inside. But that's what we're going to do today. Um, am I going to be cursed after this? Very possibly. By the way, do let me know if you are familiar with Underground Ernie or you watched it as a kid. Was it a terrifying TV show or is it just the train set that's terrifying? <laughs> do let me know. Um, anyway, <laughs> try and be brave. Let's get this out and see what it's like. So this really does look like a manifestation of all of my childhood nightmares. Hello children, are you ready to play? Relax on your tracks, it says. Is that a good idea uh, where I come from? If you were to relax on your tracks, as it were, you'd probably get run over and decapitated by a train. Or is that his evil plan? Who knows? Either way, as I say, very, very inexpensive. The reason for the low price could well be because there's a satanic demon within that I'm going to unleash when I open it up. Yes, that is very possible. But uh, either way, I'll be really interested to see. Perhaps interested isn't quite the word. Maybe utterly horrified and terrified is better and more realistic. But we'll give this a try. Uh, let me show you the back of the box because there is at least one bit of info on there. Uh, yes, it says accessories available in 2007, which sort of dates the set, doesn't it? Uh, a little bit over 10 years old, in fact 13, if you want to be precise. And you can see just what a range of accessories they have. I can't believe that I've not heard of this before, given what a range there was. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened to it. Um, I did look it up. I, I don't think there were many shows made of the of Underground Ernie, or whatever it's called. Uh, was there just one or two seasons, something like that? I don't know. I'm too frightened to watch any of it. Right, let me try and get this open then. I'll uh, bring Rusty, our tetanus friend, back and just see if we can't get this open. And, uh, yeah, wish me luck. If this is the last video I ever post, um, please, somebody, come and take this train set out of my house and burn it. Okay. All right, I've managed to open one end. Let's pull it out and see what we get. Okay, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I've just caught sight of something equally frightening. We have a gigantic, what looks like, postman. And if he was to scale, he would be literally, what do you reckon, 15 feet tall, something like that. That's going to be good. I'd love to see him in one of my dreams. Okay, well, we'll just put you there, sir, and I'll make sure that the sellotape has secured you down, just in case you do come to life and try to hurt me. Right, so what do we have in here? We've got these, I think, is this known as Backman EZ track? I've never witnessed this before. Uh, this is cool. It's very dirty. Why is it so dirty? Or is it rust? I'm not sure. It could be steel track that has uh, gone bad in the what, 13 years since this was produced. Right, anyway, let's have a look. Okay, so there's stuff stuck to the front and the back of this packaging. So let's get the stuff off the front first and then we'll move on to the back. So we seem to have some station platforms. One of them's wrapped and one of them isn't, which is interesting, I suppose. So there we go, as you can see, there's some nice colors on there. Uh, I'm sure that will help to make everything better. <laughs> Okay, right, uh, let's get the engine out then, although obviously engine is a loose term. There's a bit of sponge here stuck to the packaging. I'm not sure what that's for. Is that to help protect part of the engine? I don't know. Right, okay, so there's a cardboard box stuck to the bottom. <laughs> this is weird, isn't this weird? And my God, look at that face. Yeah, I'm going to stick with the diseased caterpillar wearing lipstick analogy. I think that's the most accurate. Okay. Well, that's that then, <laughs> is about all I can say. Let's have a look at the other piece. 
I'm still worried about opening the bags. Okay, so this is effectively a coat, I think. I can't see any mechanism on there. Uh, in the same livery, of course, obviously based on an underground. Although, yeah, in London, I've never seen actual trains with really frightening faces. So we'll have to see how that ends up. Okay, let's try and take some of the rusty track out then. Oh. There we are. This is cool stuff, actually. It means you can put it on the carpet and your trains won't all get guffed up. Uh, so that is pretty cool. It does appear to be steel track, though, which would explain why it's all sort of corroded in so little time. Um, OK, yep, fair enough. Might have to try and clean that or possibly just not use it at all, but we'll see if it works. And then we've got some curves here, which are the same construction. Uh, we've got just four curves, it looks like, so presumably there will be more on the back of the pack which is a weird way of doing it um, because I now turn the pack over and we have the other side, which has a track mat by the looks of it. So let's see if we can take that off. To reveal, uh, we have, oh, this, is this a poster? This looks good. Featuring suddenly a lot of very normal looking trains. Ah, that's a bit better, isn't it? Ooh, nightmare over. Okay, that's nice. And then we have a little bit about perhaps the train set itself. Let's take a look. Yep, so what is this then? Uh, train set assembly, it says. We've got all sorts of photos of the control of the power track, how to put track together. Uh, yeah, that all seems pretty fair enough. Operation, yeah, a little bit about that. Fault finding, yeah, short circuit, all that sort of stuff. So it's all the basic stuff. Definitely worth checking it out if it's your first train set. Although, God help you if this is your first train set. I don't think you'll be buying another, will you? And then we also have a track layout guide. There you go. So if you wanted to expand, uh, I would probably have your self-examined or something. Okay, so this is cool though, on the plus side. Uh, jokes aside, we seem to have a really big point, Oop, which is stuck to something else. Wow, look at that, that's not bad, is it? A point in a train set that cost less than 60 quid? I should say, I do not know what the RRP of this train set was. I assume back in 2007, the equivalent price at least would have been quite a lot more because any train set with a point is generally quite a bit more expensive than that, uh, let alone with uh, a reasonably big train, although it's not really a big train, is it? I don't know, stop rambling. Let's get the rest of the track out then. So we've got some short straights. What are these for? This is odd. I must say it doesn't seem quite as intuitive as the Hornby stuff. So we've got, hang on, three different lengths of straight, it looks like. <laughs> okay. One of them has a buffer stop, a proper buffer stop on it, which looks really cool. Look at that one. Let's get a close up on that. Cool. I didn't realise we'd get something like that. So, yeah, this isn't too bad at all. And I must say, the amount of track seems to be more than generous, doesn't it? So we've got more curves here. How many? That's another four curves. And some more even. How many have we got here? Yeah, another four. Okay. And then we have a straight power track here. And more different straights. So how many is that? That's one, two, three, four different lengths of straight in the trade set. I must say, I don't know whether to be impressed or confused at this point. I think impressed though, because we've got a re-railer. Cool. This is some value for money, isn't it? Uh, although, if you don't factor in the lifelong curse, maybe it comes out a bit different. We have a sort of variation on the standard Backman controller here, which is stuck. Hang on. There we are. Speed controller with underground Ernie printed on the front of it. That is cool. Won't go into too much detail on the controller, though, because I have sort of talked about and reviewed it before. And then we have what has to be the biggest transformer I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yes, that includes the ones at power stations. AC adapter, it says. What does it put out? It's 16 volt output at 1 amp. Good God. Why is that so huge? <laughs> it's going to rip the sockets out of my wall, I think. Right. Well, what an experience that was. So, let's get my lovely new friend up close and personal for you. Anyone with a weak disposition, uh, close your eyes and leave now, if I were you. Or... Uh, Yep, don't blame me for the consequences. And we'll take a look at some of the details, shall we? Okay. Well, folks, there she is. And my goodness me, what an interesting shape that is. Well, I've read into it a little bit more. It seems that this engine is not called Ernie. It turns out that this chap is called Ernie. And I've measured him, and sure enough, he is indeed to scale over nine feet tall. All I'll say about that is it's a damn good job he's kept underground. Never mind that, though, because he has an even more terrifying feature. His arms are made of rubber, 
which allows them to be bent into quite disturbing and sometimes effeminate shapes, which is obviously excellent. They're also articulated, which means he can do unpolitically correct salutes, which is great, I think. And of course, he's got quite the expression on his face there. So good old Ernie. Uh, really glad to have that in my collection now. Going to have to find a, a steel box or something to keep him in. Anyway, what can we say about this unnamed creature? Well, first of all, the face protrudes out a very long way from the front, which, as I say, gives the whole thing a really interesting shape. Uh, the face, yeah, is genuinely terrifying. Uh, there's really bright lipstick on. The cheeks, although green, seem to have a red flush to them. And the eyes have this sort of yellow tinge around them, which cannot be good. Definitely worth a trip to the doctors, I would say. Yeah, the level of detail is very, very basic. It's just a moulded body, really. None of the doors open or anything like that. Thank goodness. I don't want to imagine what would be kept inside. And all the windows and such are just uh, brown paint. So, yeah, it's very, very basic. Uh, we do have a, a bit of nice printing going on there, so it would be fun to use. But besides that, there's not really an awful lot I can say. Is <laughs> just I will just show it to you and let you make up your own minds and then never sleep properly ever again. Anyway, I'm going to set all this stuff up. I will set up the track and the track mat and all the other lovely bits that came with this one, and then we'll get it going and see what happens, not to the loco, but to me. So the assembly was interesting, to say the least. The first shock, shall we say, was the size of the track mat. They were absolutely massive, almost to the point of farce. The track takes up, I would say, around two-thirds of the mat. There's no way this mat would fit onto your dining room table, and even some living rooms, I imagine, would struggle to fit this in. Uh, so what they were thinking there, I have no idea. I thought there was two track mats to start with, but no, it's in two halves just because of the size. I wasn't dreadfully impressed with the track either. It's a clever idea and some of the parts went together no problem, as you can see there. However, with a lot of them, the fish plates didn't line up correctly. It was actually quite frustrating to get them together and I trapped my fingers many times. Some of the pieces even broke off and I've had a job to repair them. In fact, I haven't bothered to repair that one. I've just put it together. The box says that this set is for ages three and up. I personally disagree with that. I think there are too many finger trapping opportunities and too much frustration for an age like that. Not to mention the fact that the track is steel and pretty rusty in places. The station pieces were quite difficult to put together. They were quite frustrating. Again, a four or five year old isn't gonna have a nice time with that. But the re-railer did work pretty well, and as you can see, the loco went on, for loco, for want of a better term, went on the track without any problems. Mechanically speaking, the engine is not that impressive. It's pretty light at 156 grams, and it does use traction tyres to compensate the light weight. The mechanism doesn't have any proper bearings. It looks like it's on a plastic chassis. Only two axles are driven, but it does seem to have all-wheel pickup, at least on the motor part. For now though, let's give this a try and see if it actually works. Fingers crossed that it will. Here we go then, prepare to be frightened. Okay, turning it up, let's see. Oh, I didn't think it was gonna start then, but it did. Okay, so it runs, it seems reasonably slowly. <laughs> it's the, uh, oh, and it stopped. There we are. Oh, that felt good. <laughs> are the eyes working? Is everybody terrified? I think the answer is yes to both of those questions. Fantastic. Right, well, let's get this thing running in then, shall we? There we go. So, <laughs> um, what to say about this? I'm not entirely sure. Well, it's functional, isn't it? Well, no, it isn't. It stopped already. Well, it's sort of functional. I'm sure once it's had a chance to warm up and if I get some of the rust off the rails, I'm sure that it will start to work a little bit better. And I think the point has just derailed it. Has it? Possibly? Not sure. Yeah, I'm not dreadfully impressed, folks, actually. Uh, I think the fact that the track is probably dirty will account for the constant stoppages. However, that doesn't account as to why the Loco derails every time it goes over the points, as you can see. Okay, let's put this onto the main track then and see how the loco performs in more ideal situations.
All right, so there it is. I've let it run in and I've given it a little bit of lubrication. The lubrication didn't seem to make much of a difference, but I thought I would do it just to be absolutely fair, given how old this is, I think. If this was made in 2007, then 13 years is definitely enough time for it to warrant a bit of lubrication. Let's see how it runs on the Hornby track then with the Gauge Master controller. Let's try a little bit of a slow crawl. Okay, that's not bad, is it? Let's see if I can get it any slower. So despite the slightly pants mechanism, the performance itself from the loco, not to mention the rest of the train set, is okay, it must be said. There we go, it's not quiet by any means, it's quite noisy. And it does seem to be better continuity-wise, although it does stop on express points and such, which is a bit unfortunate given that it's supposed to be all-wheel pickup. There we go. But it will be interesting to see if it actually stops and such on curves, so we'll give that a bit of a go. Uh, yeah, express points, it doesn't like. <laughs> Mind you, it doesn't like the points that it came with, so I'm not surprised. A bit faster, though. It sort of dips, but it gets over them. There we go. Right, let's set it off around the layout then, if I dare, see if it frightens my passengers to death. So as a loco on its own, I'm more than happy with this. The mechanism isn't fantastic, but the performance is fine, and I know that it's weird and obscure enough that people are going to like seeing it run. It is a shame about the rest of the train set. I mean, I personally won't be able to use a lot of the other stuff that came with it. I mean, the track is steel, and it's different to the track I normally use because it's got the easy plastic supports on it. The controller's not the best, as you might remember from my controller video, so a lot of that stuff isn't that useful. The Loco itself, though, yeah, it's fine. It's quite funny, it's quite amusing, and it works as it's supposed to. But for God's sake, if you've got one, lock it away at night time, because you do not want to find out what this thing's capable of. When it thinks you're not looking, and the way its eyes dart left and right is a bit creepy as well. It's, it's very shifty looking, isn't it? That's for sure. I think it has to be the most unsettling train set I've ever come across though, and for that, I do enjoy it. Stay away from it, Bullman, you don't know where it's been. So here are my ratings then for the pretty interesting Backman Underground Ernie train set. I've given the level of detail quite a high score there, which might confuse some people of course because of how basic the model was. But don't forget the intention here was to recreate a character from TV, right, which was a very, very basic character. And from what I've seen on the photos, Backman did a good job of that, and the moving eyes and details such as that do help to do that. So I would say the detail does deserve four stars, although obviously if it was a serious model, I wouldn't be giving it that. The performance, I've just given two stars. Yes, unfortunately, out of the box, the performance was not great. The Loco can't really do a slow crawl, whether that's the controller or not, I'm not sure, because it was slightly better on the Gauge Master, but it kept stopping and derailing on the points. Yeah, it's just not an amazing performer, although I should say it is better on Hornby Track. The pulling power was pretty good though, I measured that this can haul about 20 coaches, which is very good. Obviously though, that's because of the traction tyres and when they start to go hard and old and decay a little bit, they won't be so good. The mechanism, I've given two stars, a lot of things let the mechanism down, the fact that it has traction tyres, no proper bearings. And if we take the body off, as you can see, we have the facility there for all wheels to be driven. It's just they've only connected the motor to the front set of wheels to save money, presumably, on extra parts such as gears. So that's a little bit of a shame. You can see that we have a DCC socket inside there, which is pretty good. So this is DCC ready, and it does have all-wheel pickup too, which isn't too bad. And of course, the eyes work as well. So it's not terrible, but not great overall. The quality, I've given three stars for pretty obvious reasons. The easy track isn't the best. It's made of steel for a start which obviously rusts and goes bad over time and gets dirty crucially to say that this is designed for people over three years old it was not easy to put together and some parts of it even broke not brilliant track and of course the mechanism probably ought to have been better as well given the hammer that some little folks could give it the value then now it gets the benefit of the doubt on value because i do not know what the rrp of this was however for the price i paid 59 pounds 50 i don't think it's too bad even though a lot of the items in the pack are a bit questionable you do get a lot in there you get the little figure you get a lot of track you get the track mats the points 
the buffer stop for example yeah i mean they're quite generous in what you get even though what you get isn't all that functional but yeah not too bad on the value so overall then that is 6.29 out of 10 let me know in the poll is that too harsh or is it not harsh enough i'd be interested to know into the logbook it goes then 18th above the helgen 1361 and below the backman 43xx very interesting stuff well, that certainly was quite an experience. Uh, I can't believe I've never heard of Underground Ernie. Have you guys heard of it? Yeah, it could just be me. But it is amazing that I've never heard of this, given how uh, insanely weird looking some of the characters are. But either way, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to let me know down in the comments what you thought. And I will see you on the next video, hopefully for something that is less likely to induce horrifying nightmares for you. And with that thought, I will leave you to it. Have a good night tonight. <laughs> we'll see if you survive until morning. And I'll see you next time. Cheers, everybody. And you're welcome.